All right, so we've taken a look at how the Lorentz transformation in special relativity is set up as a matrix multiplying a column vector. The column vector has your observations of some event in space-time. It's got a time value, an x, y, and z values that all get bundled together. Then the Lorentz transformation has some information about the velocity with which another observer is moving with respect to you. So you always consider yourself to be stationary. You're never going to measure your own velocity to be anything but zero because as you look at yourself, uh, you are not moving, right? But this other person comes along and is moving, and we want to know how do they measure the t, x, y, z values. And the way we get it is by doing this matrix multiplication. We also looked last time at how you can multiply matrices together. And in this video, we're going to put those together to see what happens when you do multiple Lorentz transformations. Uh, let's first start with the basics of the Lorentz transformation. We're going to import NumPy as always. And the way I've done this, since we're going to be doing the same types of uh, matrix multiplication and setting up the same structure of the matrices repeatedly, I've gone ahead and made this a function. Anytime you're doing something more than once in Python, you might as well go ahead and define a function because once you set that function in a Jupyter notebook, uh, you run that cell, it remembers what the function is in any other cell. So there's really no need to copy and paste the same snippet of code repeatedly in a Jupyter Notebook, you can always define a function to do the thing that you want. So you start a function with this DEF that stands for define, meaning I'm defining a function with this name, right? The name that comes next is what I want to call the function. And then you list uh, any inputs you want to have. We're interested in the velocity of our observer, so we're going to put in V for their velocity along the X axis. Uh, we also need to set the speed of light. Uh, it's most convenient to work with C equal to one or as Peskin and Schroeder say on the, the very first page of their QFT textbook, this is working in God-given units. Next, we move on to the new variables we need to define for our Lorentz transformation. Remember, we have beta and gamma. Beta is the same thing as your velocity, just rescaled by C. Yes, I know I'm dividing by one here, but you might want to use real units with C equal to 2.99 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Uh, then gamma just becomes 1 minus beta squared all raised to the negative 1 half power, right? That's the same thing as 1 over square root of the thing in the parentheses. And so then we just return our matrix. So we use the np.array function. Uh, we have gamma and the negative beta gamma, just like we had uh, in uh, the previous video. And then we have ne negative beta gamma and gamma to sort of, this is where we're mixing the, the time and the x values. And then here we just have returned the same value of y and the same value of z, because like we saw previously, uh, you don't change your y and z observations if you're only moving with respect to the x axis. So since this is the return, this is the thing that Python is going to spit back when it finishes the function. Okay, so let's give it a try. Let's suppose uh, that we were working with a, a, an observer who is moving at half the speed of light, right? So we are stationary. We are looking at some coordinates. Um, I've given it the space-time coordinates of 1, 1, 0, 0. So it's, it's one unit away from us. In the x-axis, it's occurring at a time value ct equal to 1, and then it's just it's at the same y and z values as us. And so what will happen, uh, our, we have a friend coming by who is moving relative to us at a speed of half the speed of light. And so we want to see what this Lorentz matrix looks like, what our observation looks like, and then what their observation looks like. So let's run this code cell. So for the Lorentz that we printed, uh, this is the matrix that's going to transform our buddy's uh, observation, right? So we are looking um, at this thing at 1, 1, 0, 0, right? This is our observation. And then this is the matrix that's going to multiply it. So if we think about what we learned last time, what this means is that this row is going to multiply this column, right? So I'm going to take 1.15, multiply it by 1. Then I'm going to take negative 0.577, multiply it by 1, and then I have 0, 0, 0, 0, so we don't need to worry about this. So in other words, I'm going to get this number minus this number. So that should be uh, a, a bit less than this. Actually, it looks like it is exactly half of this, uh, because the way we set it up with v equal to a half, uh, this number is two times this number. Kind of nice. Um, so we end up with our friend seeing the event happening at this time and at this x location. In other words, our buddy who is moving along at the speed of, at half the speed of light sees the event happening earlier in time 
and closer to them. Remember, moving clocks run slow, moving rulers measure short. So they see this as this event as happening uh, earlier in time. So they see it earlier than we do, and they see it as happening closer uh, along the uh, along the x-axis than we do. So wild stuff already going on. Our friend experiences a completely different universe than we do because of this length contraction time dilation stuff. But now what if another person comes by? What if another person comes speeding by and says, I want to look at this too. And let's suppose they are moving relative to the first observer at a velocity of v over 2 at, at half of their speed. Right, so this is where it gets, we have to start thinking about this, right? So we see the first observer coming by at velocity v, right? The observer, the second observer, sees this person gaining on them with a speed of v over 2. So we measure the first observer at a speed of half the speed of light. They see the next observer at a speed of a quarter of the speed of light, right? Uh, but that doesn't mean we see them at three quarters the speed of light, right? Because of the way the velocity addition rules work. Uh, I'll have a link to a video about that in the description below. Uh, and so because we can't just add those velocities, we have to apply the matrix twice. So let's see what happens if we apply this twice. So our last output here is going to be uh, what happens to this new observer, right? Uh, so they've got now a CT value of 0.447 and an X value of 0.447. And so they see it even earlier and even closer. But you notice it's not quite half of that, right? Or it's not quite uh, three quarters of this value, right? There's not really a, a nice, clearly discernible relationship uh, between those two. Um, let's make this a little more interesting. Let's suppose we move the event farther away. We say, okay, we're getting close to, too close to this thing. Let's, let's spread it out a little bit. So again, our mat the, the Lorentz matrices are going to be the same because those only depend on the Vs. But we see it at 1, 2, 0, 0. Uh, our friend, our first observer, actually sees it at the beginning. They end up seeing it at time t equals 0. Again, because we're subtracting a couple things, now we've got them exactly canceling. Uh, but they now actually see it, uh, well, excuse me, yeah, they, they see it a little bit closer uh, than we saw it because i got to remember that I've now changed this 1 to a 2 here. But then the other person, this is where it gets really interesting, the next observer sees it happening earlier. They see it happening before we even started our stopwatches at zero. And they see it farther away than our initial observer does. So the last time they saw it closer, now they see it farther than the other observer. So there's all sorts of wild stuff going on here uh, just because of how the space and time are interacting. Now the other question you might ask, what if this was in reverse? What if we swapped their velocities? What if our first observer is only moving at a quarter of the speed of light and our next observer is moving at half the speed of light? Will we get the same uh, uh, results here in terms of the observations? Uh, so let's do that. Let's have this print, I think I need to do it this way where I print V over 2. And then we'll go from V over 2 to V. So is this pair of observations going to be the same as the other pair of observations? Just to separate these, let's put in print uh, reverse run. And now I get something quite interesting. Because when I look at the second observer here and the second observer here, I actually get the same numbers. And so these matrices, at least in this special case, did commute with each other. Like, I can get the same result by doing that. Now, of course, I don't get the same result for the first one, right? Because I've swapped v for v over 2. There's no way those are going to be the same. But v over 2 times v, same thing as v times v over 2. But maybe that's a special case because I've got a 1 and a 2 here, right? So let's get something random. Uh, I had an, a professor in grad school who said, anytime you need something random, do, uh, do 7s. Because 1 over 7 is this ridiculous looking number. It's about as, as, as irrational a rational number as you can get. Uh, and then let's do an 11 because uh, 11 has you know similar odd behaviors when you make it into a decimal and you do one over it or something. Um, and actually we do get the same thing. We get a 14.63, a 14.63, a negative 9.64, negative 9.64. Uh, let's Let's see, the, we know the Y and the Z are going to be the same, right? Because those remain uh, unchanged. Uh, let's make it even more interesting. Let's throw in some uh, irrationals here. So and then we can do NP dot E to the 1 here. 
Uh, well, actually, let's make it e squared, right? Even more irrational. Oh, wait, is that more irrational? You can't get more irrational. Things are either irrational or not. Uh, oh, it's just np dot pi. It doesn't get parentheses, does it? There we go. All right, well, I think it's past the test there. It looks like these two matrices are, in fact, commuting, that you can swap their order there, uh, which is good to know, right? That, that, you know, obviously matrices can commute if you get special uh, arrangements for them. Here we've got a special arrangement where they do commute, which is pretty exciting.